no alley. Well, you're out there with other players. So you're, you're talking to other actors. They're all out there. So, but the technical part is to walk, everything is marked out on a floor with tape. And so you have to be careful not to trip over, because there's nothing there, there's only tape. So if you walk across the tape, you just tripped over a chair, or so, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of stopping and starting. There's a lot of cutting and beginning and, you know, all of that. So it's just, um, it's just very technical and it's different than any other kind of acting that I've done. How much notice did you have when they wanted you back on Stargate? Because I know you kind of left and they killed you off and you came back several times. You mean to go back and do an episode? Mm -hmm. You usually have two weeks. They usually call you about two weeks in advance. I mean, I, I've been called, not necessarily for Stargate, but, you know, I've been called in, on very, very short notice where somebody's had to drop out of a show or somebody's had to drop out of a job. And then, you know, I've had 24 hours notice. That has happened. Um, it's not good when it does. It's not good for anybody, and they realize that. But they just say, "Can you, mm -hmm. can you learn these words by tomorrow morning?" You go send it over. Yes, I can do it. And so, but usually, to answer your question on Stargate, especially two weeks, because you have to understand, I'm coming out of Los Angeles. They need me in Vancouver. So, you know, there's plane tickets, there's stuff, there's time, there's all of that. You know, to have to deal with. So, they. FedEx you the script or whatever they're going to do and get the script to you and and then you just learn the script and by the time you get there you mm -hmm. at least know your words um, and you don't know where to stand when you say them but you'll learn that as as you go along. Hey. Well that's why I'm a carpenter on the side. That's why I, I frame houses on the side. That's, that's what I do. You know I build decks and I build gazebos and I put additions on houses and put new kitchens and bathrooms and because that's what I do when I'm not working as an actor. So I just, yeah, I like that kind of stuff and then I get to work with my hands and I get to work with my buddy Doug and it's, it's good. But it drives you nuts too. Because <laughs> when you're, you, you know, I, I have my nail gun out and I'm framing something, I'll say, Jesus, I wish they'd call. I wish they, I wish I would get something. I don't want to work this hard. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the joke. I, I go to an acting job now. I say, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm waiting for a good framing job to come along. So I'm I'm only on your set till a good framing job comes along. Yes. Okay, this is a question about Independence Day, my little park there on Independence Day, and, and uh, Rachel wanted to know if we were in the desert or where we were when we filmed it. I, in, in case some of you don't know, I was uh, a, a guard at a gate, and Will Smith is trying to get into an air base or something, and to answer your question first, we were not in the desert, we were on the Bonneville Salt Flats in Wendover, Utah, so it's a, it's a very well-known place for, for race cars. It's a very well-known place for race cars and uh, breaking the land speed record on wheels. And so I was excited to be there. And, um, and Will Smith shows me the alien, you know. But what we did was when we rehearsed it, when you're on the Bonneville Salt Flats, you, kinda, you, can, you can tend to get snow blind because just everything's white. Everything is white in it, as far as the eye can see for miles and miles and miles. And... Um, we were out in the middle of it. They, they took us to the middle of it because I guess Dean wanted that look, Dean and Roland both, or Roland Emmerich, they wanted that look of just continuous, the abyss kind of thing. And, and um, so I rehearsed it with Will Smith a couple of times. He was in the back of the truck, in the pickup truck, and I was, you know, right here. And he said, you know, I said, I'm sorry, sir, I can't let you pass without the proper clearance or whatever it was. And he says, oh, you want to see my clearance? And he shows me the alien, and I jump back. I said, let him pass, let him pass. And that was all very cool. I didn't know about all of these trucks were going to be coming. I had no idea. I had no idea. Okay. And then 
And then all of these mechanic things started going on. Walkie talkie started coming and Dean looked at me and he just said, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. You ready? I said, yeah, of course. And I'm just thinking, well, I'm just gonna stand here, you know, and because we've been rehearsing this. He goes, no, no, start inside the booth. Okay, so I start inside the booth and they, I see the loom arm come down and he shoots me through the thing and we do that little part first. Nothing's coming yet, okay? And then I see the um, I see the pickup truck coming, and behind the pickup truck, and I never saw that many uh, RVs in my life. I mean, I, I'm serious. They were probably a hundred, maybe 125 RVs, and they were, it, and they were creating this kind of dusty storm with them. And I thought. Holy Jesus, if I screw up, all of those trucks have to turn around and go back the other way. And now, now, now I'm starting to go, oh man, there's a lot riding on this. I'm thinking, you know, that little man that speaks to you in the head, you, there's a lot going on here and I cannot screw this up. Well, I didn't, I didn't. Where the, where the, um, all the RVs turned around and went back and I, I looked at Dean and Dean just said, nice, nice. Okay, okay, so I'm not fired yet. This is good. But I said, Dean, you know, it would have been really good to tell me about all these RVs. And he said, don't like to tell you that stuff. Because, you know, I like it to be a surprise. I said, it was. It was a surprise. Because these guys were, literally, these guys were probably two miles away. I didn't see them. They must have radioed them and said, bring the RVs. And <laughs> a, a, a lot of them. So, um, get them and the reaction then it was just Will Smith and I talking to each other right there. And, and so, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. It was a lot of fun. And I, I'm very happy I was a part of that movie. That was good. Have you ever gotten this into a situation where somebody had lived something so funny that they had to stop shooting so everybody could recompose themselves? Oh, goodness, yes. Oh, yeah, no, that happens all the time. We talked about it yesterday during our panel about... Uh, people getting the giggles and stuff like that, you know, and, and I've been part of a giggle session that just, you know, and it's in the wee hours and, you know, people need to go home and you're, you're probably in two and a half hours of overtime and just everybody's goofy uh, and, and because, you know, it's a thousand o'clock in the morning and people are looking like, I want to go home, what are you doing? And all of a sudden it, it causes you to get the giggles and yes, we've all been a part of that. Or or, you know, somebody says something completely off the wall because they forgot what they were going to say or forgot what they're supposed to say. And, you know, cut. Yeah, let's cut. Let's cut. And go back. No big deal. Happens all the time. Yes. Pranksters. Pranksters on a set? Have I ever been on a set where there is a prankster? Are you? Are you? No. No. Chris, Christopher Judge is a prankster. Yes. <laughs> there is um, there is a uh, uh, shenanigators. We call them, yeah. Sh yeah. Shenanigators, which is the instigators of shenanigans. Uh, and there, there's, there's, there's quite a few. There's quite a few I have worked with. Chris Judge is definitely right up on that list. Uh, Richard Dean Anderson, pretty good one there. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes Linda Hamilton would get fired up uh, the times I worked with her. And there, there's many of them. And it just depends. You know, people get in funny moods and all of a sudden they realize, yeah, I, could, I could do something really, really funny here. And, you know, and they do. And it's, it's always welcome. It's always welcome unless the director doesn't welcome it. And then the director will say, go to your trailer until you're needed. Get out of here right now. Go to your trailer. Because otherwise we'll be here until 1,000 o'clock in the morning. And nobody wants that. You have to have fun at work. You have to. I don't care what you do. You have to be able to smile and have a little bit of fun at work. 